now we will have Q&A session. Anyone who has a question about today's topics or any other topic related to spirituality, I would be happy to address any inquiries. Thank you. Thank you. I want to know that when it comes to karmic account, we know when we are going through it, it just punches you from everywhere. Recently, I'm giving up to it. I'm doing everything I'm not supposed to do. I don't know. When it's like, I know it's, I'm going through a tough time. I know when I, if I meditate, I'm going to feel good, but I'm not doing it. I want to know that in that case, is it okay to ask your guru to, like, Please help me with this. Or should I just leave? Like, I feel like, you know what, it's a karmic account. I have to go through it. Or should I ask for forgiveness? I can't do it. I can't. Thank you. Karmic account can be extremely difficult not only amongst seekers, but also amongst initiates. As we all know, meditation does burn karma. But it has to be a proper meditation. And today, I have shared with all of you a very important component of a successful meditation imagination and also the meditation has to be practiced regularly with love and devotion meditation will certainly burn karma now in addition to meditation you could also have yearning and longing deep within yourself to your beloved to help you out in this very challenging time. Molana Rumi has said, there is always hope after despair. And sometimes, actually many times, karma hits us so badly and we feel that we are desperate, and then after that, things will start opening up. Things will get better. In your case, I see that as a good sign. Yeah, I was asking, well, in that case, because I was used to, to think that, you know what, it's karmic account, I'm not gonna ask for help. So <laughs> I'm just gonna go through it. I have to go through it. No, you need to ask help. Because if you're not going to ask help, the mind will take over. Yes, you need to ask help from your beloved, from your master. Again, my friends, very important thing. We can either be manmuk or gurumuk. Manmuk, we are slaves of the mind. Gurumuk, we are slaves of the guru, of our Paramsansad guru. There is no gray area. We cannot say to us, 
okay, master, um, if I need you, I will let you know, but I'm going to take care of this issue. It doesn't work this way, my dear friends. The master will tell you, go ahead, do it. And guess what? We are doomed to fail. Why? Because our mind is our worst enemy. Ishwar Puriji has repeatedly explained to us that our mind is our worst enemy. We do not have any external enemy. The mind is our worst enemy. But then there is a caveat. After a person has spiritually developed to a certain extent, the mind will become their best friend. But right now, the mind is our worst enemy. So in your case, if you say, okay, master, I think I can handle that. Thank you very much. If I need help, I'll let you know. He's going to tell you, go ahead, be my guest. And it's not going to work. You decide whether you want to be a manmuk or guru muk. Again, my recommendation as well as Ishwarji's recommendation, we should all be guru muk. It's very important. We should submit ourselves to the will of the master. There are only two wills in this world and in this existence. The will of the mind, and mind is created by Kal, the Lord, the God of time and death. And there is the will of the master, our Dayal, the mercy, merciful one, and that's our master. You decide which one you want. You want to submit yourself to the will of the mind or submit yourself to the will of the master. It is your choice. Thank you. Hello. Um, I just want to share uh, my perspective and my experience. I um, have dealt with some major challenges in the last couple of years, but I feel that by meditating every day and also surrendering to him, because if we are part of the divine and we are one, the master and ourselves, if we're already one, we are already whole and complete, we're just here to play our roles, and we surrender, because also Ishwaji used to say that we picked the DVD, so everything is playing out the way it's meant to play out. And the biggest challenge for us is to accept whatever comes our way. So in the last two years, you know, my husband passed away, and before that, my daughter passed away. But I think what helped me the most was that inner connection, and then somehow I was given the strength from within. And I was just totally amazed at how I was able to carry on, and I've been asking for what my purpose is for being here, I think, obviously, I have some more work to do while I'm here. But the greatest gift has been the inner connection, going inwards. So in the last two years, particularly, I've spent a lot of time on reflection and meditation. And it has been such a blessing. Sure, I still struggle sometimes with my mind because the mind wants to continue to pull me out into the world, but I can see it for what it is now. Um, and my second question is related to the tr trick or secret you told us today about meditation. I have trouble imagining, but I'm not sure when I'm imagining myself sitting there, to, do I need to see a physical form or it's just a sense of energy sitting there? 
Thank you. First, my sincere condolences for the physical departure of your beloved husband and your beloved daughter. Please know they are now in good hands. As far as picking up the DVD from the Akashic Records, you are correct. And Ishwarji has explained to us in numerous occasions that we willingly picked up a DVD of our lives from the Akashic Records in Trikuti, the highest region of the causal world. We knew what is going to happen to us. Exactly we knew in the past, in the present, and in the future. Yet, we picked up this particular DVD from the Akashic record, Records, and now it is playing. We all have picked up a DVD, and it is now playing. But inside the DVD, it has been determined that we are going to be spiritually initiated by a perfect living master of the highest order who has personally come all the way from Sachkand to the physical world to initiate us so that he can fulfill his promise to all of us. The only reason why we got spiritually initiated by a perfect living master is because we got tired of this mess in this physical world. We want to return back to our true home, to eternal bliss. The drop of ocean wants to be permanently merged into the boundless ocean of love. The drop of water wants to eternally merge with the boundless ocean of love. But again, we should not blame anyone for our trouble, for our misery, for our suffering, because eventually we will all realize that we picked up this specific DVD from the Akashic Records. We picked it up. So whose fault is it? Therefore, my dear friends, do not worry too much about this DVD that is currently playing. The most important thing is we have all gotten spiritual initiation by a perfect living master and the road to our true home has already started. That's what that is what matters the most. Regarding your inquiry about imagination, some of us have difficulties imagining things. So maybe in the future, I have been approached by some of you, why can't we do some IMR, also known as intensive meditation retreat? Maybe that's something that we can certainly do in the future that is going to help you a lot in imagining. But one simple thing. Right now you're looking at me, correct? Okay. If I ask you to close your eyes and imagine something inside your head, say for example, me, right now I am staring at you. Can you please close your eyes right now and imagine that I am there? Very good. Open your eyes. It is not that difficult. It is easy, but not simple. But again, in a previous satsang here in the greater Toronto area, I mentioned to all of you that Love and devotion are extremely important for any successful meditation. 
today I have given you another component which is as equally as important to love and devotion, imagination. We all need to imagine that we are at the third eye center, at the real seat of human consciousness. Imagining is good enough. And then imagine that you are meeting your beloved inside and start repeating the Simran with love and devotion at the same time, you contemplate on the eyes and the forehead of your master. When you hear any sound, then you stop the Simran and you focus on Bhajan, that is listening to the sound current, but you can also practice a Dhyan, that is contemplation of your, uh, the eyes and the forehead of your master, at the same time while listening to the sound current. Do not make Simran with Bhajan at the same time. Ishwarji has explained that this is not recommended. But you can do Simran with a Dhyan, followed by Bhajan with a Dhyan. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. We're talking about the DVD we picked. So my question is why I will pick the DVD? What, what make me pick certain DVD? How you make your mind? What DVD you gonna pick? And second part to it, if I pick up a certain DVD, it will finish up in this lifetime or continue in next lifetime? Thank you. Every one of us who decided to come to the lower worlds, especially Pinda, has to pick up a DVD. It is a requirement. It's not optional. We all, we have all decided to pick up, to come to this lower, to these lower worlds, including Pinda. Therefore, we have to pick up a DVD. The DVD will contain past, present, and future events that happen, that happened, happen, and will happen to us. So therefore, to come to this physical world, it is a requirement for all of us to pick up a DVD so that it will play our life. Now, let me ask you this. Have you been spiritually initiated or no? Not yet. No. Okay. Obviously, you are a seeker of the truth, otherwise you wouldn't have been here, correct? Yes. Very good. So, the second part of the second question is whether it's going to be the last life or not. That all depends on your sanskaras, that also depend on your karma, and that includes pralabd, Kareman and Sinchit Karma that I have explained earlier. If you decide to spiritually get initiated by a perfect living master of the highest order, he or she will guarantee that you will have at most four physical lives, including this one. Now, most of the time, you only need one or two physical lives. Then after that, the master will meet you after you leave the physical body, and he or she will decide with you how to go further, whether you need to spend time in the astral world, the causal world, to include Trikuti, whether you need to go to Parbram, or whether you will go straight to Sachkhand. That all depends on your karmas, and it depends on your impressions, and depends on your desires. My friends, please remember that the spiritual path is extremely customized. What is good for you might not good be good for me. What is good for me might not be good for him, and so on and so forth. But... A perfect living master of the highest order 
can look straight in your eyes and he or she will decide to initiate you because when the chela is ready, the guru appears. And then we will take it from there. But the most important thing is to get the spiritual initiation because you have already started your road to the true home, to such kind. And again, Ishwarji has explained to us that after a spiritual initiation by a Param Sant, Sadguru, you can have up to, up to four physical lives. And that's it. Then after that, it depends on your karma, whether you're going to spend some time in the astral world, the causal world, to include the Trikuti region, if you have curiosity to go and check them out, or if you prefer going straight to Sachkand, to your true home, and have you, the drop of water, permanently merged with the boundless ocean of bliss and love. Thank you. You're welcome. Tarakji, um, when you explained about successful, having a successful meditation, that was very interesting. What is a successful, what is the criteria which we can um, determine what it, when, when, when we finish a meditation, whether it has been successful or not? Thank you, Jason. Ishwar Puriji has explained to me that a successful meditation is based on two criteria. Number one, imagination. And number two, you do your meditation with love and devotion. If you can have these two criteria going forward in your meditation, this is considered a successful meditation. Again, number one, imagination. You need to imagine that you are at the seat of human consciousness at the third eye center. And number two, you do your meditation with love and devotion to your master. If you can fulfill these two components, your meditation will certainly and definitely be successful. Thank you. I have um, a few follow-ups just that's coming to my mind. Um, because I always thought that <clears throat> withdrawal of attention is something we want to achieve. We want to withdraw from the body is a sign of progress. Withdrawal of the body would mean that you start to withdraw from the limbs, the feet, the arms, the hands, and we collect ourselves fully in the third eye so we no longer feel our body. So that was my understanding that that is the goal because once that happens then we can we are fully inside and being fully inside we are no longer aware of this physical world and in that process what i'm understanding is it's helpful to bring love and devotion to do our meditation with love and devotion in order to to achieve that. Sometimes, um, because sometimes, actually, I don't want to go there. Let me just come back to that. Um, so on one hand, my understanding is we want to achieve, we want to achieve withdrawal, 
And, and if I achieve complete withdrawal, that would be a sign of progress. But then on the other hand, I also hear Ishwar and, and, and yourself, Ishwarji and yourself saying that love and devotion is a sign of progress. So sometimes when I do the meditation and I experience memory or imagination of being with Ishwarji, going back to those memories and reliving those memories and visualizing them, for me, it automatically brings a feeling of love. Very quickly because whenever I see Ishwarji, it just awakens that feeling. And so I enjoy that. And oftentimes, the, there's, there's an emotion that is ex experienced in me. It's an emotion of love. It, it's, I feel love, but it is also expressed, and tears come. And it could be even one second. It could be even just, it happens in one second. You feel a flood of emotion, and tears come. So I guess my question is, if I want to practice that, experiencing that intimate moment with Ishwarji and awakening those feelings, what happens with me is that thoughts, some still, thoughts may still come in. And then the thoughts will move you to another memory or, or, or move you to some other distraction. So is the goal to steadily sustain that memory, that emotion, that imagination of being with Ishwar and the accompanied emotion that comes with it of the tears and the love. I enjoy that feeling. I really enjoy that feeling. But when tears come, I have to take the tissue, I have to take something because it starts to get overwhelming. But I'm not yet experiencing withdrawal, but I'm enjoying that. I don't know, do you, I don't know what my question is, but I'm, I'm having the, wondering if I should sustain, and when, when I experience those emotions, should I go back and relive it again and again and again for the whole two hours or three hours that I wanna sit, just keep reliving that experience again and again. Is that the goal? Thank you, Jason. When we meditate with love and devotion and we are practicing imagination, automatically we will have the withdrawal of attention from our physical body, slowly but surely, to the third eye center, which is the seat of consciousness. The goal per se is not to have the withdrawal of attention to the third eye center or the seat of consciousness. This is not the ultimate goal. The goal is to establish the radiant form of our master within. If we can meditate with love and devotion, with imagination, automatically the withdrawal of attention will be achieved and then eventually you are going to experience the radiant form of the master. That comes at a later stage. But to answer your question, as long as you are feeling blissful, remembering Ishwarji with love and devotion in meditation, even though your physical eyes are getting tearful, that is absolutely fine. If you are feeling a sense of joy and bliss beyond the happiness, because bliss Ishwarji has explained, comes from the soul. And bliss is much stronger than happiness. If you are feeling blissful, 
remembering these personal moments in your physical life that you were fortunate enough to have with Ishwar Puri Ji, and that brings love to your heart and a sense of bliss, please keep doing that. This is a very good sign. And, and should I sustain that? Because that might happen for five minutes. But I have, let's say I'm trying to sit in my morning meditation for a long period. Should I su try to sustain that? Is there any, I guess because my experience is that that comes, but then it's not sustained for the whole period of meditation. If you can sustain this experience during the entire meditation, at least while you're practicing Simran and Dhyan, that is repetition of the five holy names and the contemplation of the two eyes and the forehead of the master, that part of meditation, if you can sustain that, this would be wonderful. Now, when you go to the second part of meditation, which is listening to the sound current, closing your physical ears, and try to listen to the sound current while contemplating on the face of your master, that it is optional. If you want to sustain that during this part of meditation, this would be no harm at all. But if you're having difficulty sustaining that while trying yourself to listen to the Shabbat or the Nam within you, then I would say just go ahead and focus on listening to the sound current while at the same time try to contemplate the eyes and the forehead of the master. <coughs> Does this answer your question, Jason? Yes, it gives me some, some, some food for experimentation. Yes. Uh, and just, um, yeah, I'm just wondering, because my experience is that I, when I am remembering Shwarji like that and enjoying those emotions, I don't think I'm repeating Simran anymore. I mean, I probably am not. Because just the thought of repeating the Simran may take me away from, from that. Jason, this is a very good point. Going forward, I'd like you to experiment the following. Please repeat the Simran, do your Simran with love and devotion. At the same time, sustain these beautiful spirits personal experiences that you had with Ishwar Puriji at the same time. Same time. Yes, okay. sir. Try that. Now, when we are repeating the names, should we re repeat them without any interval between each name so that they are repeated slowly and with an interval so that you can, with that interval, you can focus on the memory? So you have to repeat uh, the five holy names slowly, Jason, and there is no harm if there is a one second interval between each and every holy name. I can share with you another secret. Try to repeat the five holy names asking Ishwarji himself to repeat them on your behalf with his own voice. That is going to be even more fulfilling for you. If you could do that, close your eyes and ask Ishwarji, go ahead, do you, my meditation on my behalf. He will be happy to do it for you. Just by remembering his physical voice when he gave you the official session of your spiritual initiation, if you can remember his voice at the same time at the same time, Jason, you sustain these personal experiences that you had with Ishwarji, both at the same time, during Simran Dhyan, that would be ideal. So if I understand correctly, Tarakji, so 
wh while listening, while imagining Ishwarji saying the names of Simran with me, I could still be having a memory with Ishwarji, for example, taking a walk with him or holding his hand. Like, could that be possible to do both, to have him say the names, but yet still have a, a, an imagination with him where he might be telling me, where we might be having a conversation. Because sometimes he does say, have a conversation with your master. So if we're having a conversation together and it's very enjoyable, how does the Simran of the, of the names fit in with that? So the answer is yes. You have to do both, if possible, at the same time. Now, once you have a conversation with the master, then you stop the Simran, obviously, because he's talking to you and you're talking to him. And once the conversation within you is over, then Ishwarji will repeat the Simran on your behalf at the same time, you're uh, contemplating on these personal experiences whereby he's giving you a hug or he's holding your, your hand or he's giving you a radiant smile or any memory in this life that really stands uh, on its own that gives you so much love uh, remembering the master. Wonderful. Thank you, Tarakji. You're welcome. Just another quick question. Um, so is the progress of meditation uh, through our efforts or through the grace of the master? Thank you. Both. Both. How much effort and when do we know to stop making effort? Because <laughs> a lot of this to me sounds like it's coming from the mind and then it can get very confusing of the techniques. Sometimes I try to just surrender and do nothing, and there may even be just silence or like nothing. So on the spiritual path, there has been a big debate when the disciple is trying to sustain spiritual progress, he or she will ask the master, master, what it is? What is it? Is it the effort that comes from me or is it the grace that comes from you? The true answer or the correct answer to this question is both. Both at the same time. Efforts from the disciple and grace from the master. They go along together. Like you mentioned, sometimes you just feel, you know what, I'm just going to surrender. Surrender to thy will, Master. And don't you feel a sense of elation, of ecstasy when you surrender? A relief. A relief? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And at that particular time, you allowed the master to take over. You have surrendered. You feel you are relieved. You feel happy. You know what? It's not my problem anymore. It's yours, master. Deal with it. Again, we have the will of the master versus the will of the mind. Each one of us will make a decision at any time whether he or she wants to choose the will of the master or, or the will of the mind. But again, both are necessary. Effort by of the disciple combined with the grace of the master. They both go along together. I remember Ishwaji saying that even the fact that you're meditating is only by his grace. So nothing is in my hands like I'm not doing anything. True, very true. Eventually, we reach a point in the spiritual journey whereby we realize we are doing absolutely nothing and he is doing absolutely everything. That comes when we have submission, when we totally and completely surrender to the will of the master, 
without any mind games and or mind tricks, that will happen. Then we realize that he's doing everything on your behalf. Everything, literally. And you are just there enjoying the master doing everything in your life on your behalf. What an absolutely wonderful feeling. Just going with the flow. And you know what? I had no idea I would be here, but I do listen to a lot of satsangs and podcasts and internet, and it popped up last week, your, a video, and then I saw the address, and it's like around the corner from me, and I had this feeling that I'm supposed to come here. It is not a coincidence that you are here. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. The universe sends many, many, many signs. True. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Hanji Anu, up Bolier. Hello. Hello. Uh, my question, actually I have two questions. So, uh, this life, I physically met uh, Babaji four times. So in Babaji meaning? Ishwar Puri Ji, oh, four okay. times. Thank you. So, I met him, fall in love, got initiated. So, uh, in those four times, I have some memories. And as the time passed, those memories have, I don't know, been uh, so much concreted by love because when I'm, when I'm meditating, I rely on those, me uh, those memories, which is again a faculty of mind. So uh, I don't know what I'm seeing is my memory or my love for Babaji because I always think that I didn't get enough chances to meet Ishwar Puriji enough. So that thing remains... I don't know if I've made myself clear or not, but in my meditation, I'm trying to remember those memories, but as time has passed, those memories and visions, I don't know, have, have they been blurred or have they been more clear by love and devotion? Because now, memory is a faculty of mind. Am I, am I, and I'm looking for help from my mind to have those visions come back to me. I don't know whether they, they are the visions from mind or whether these visions are from love. So sometimes I get confused. And my second question is uh, when I'm trying to listen to the sound, because I'm closing my ears and I, I can also uh, hear my blood vessels, like the sounds of my body, so clear. Sometimes my heart beats, sometimes uh, the, the nerves and the arteries, what, what's, what's going on within is, is so clear that they kind of overshadow the, the shabba that I want to listen. I, I think that these noises are there so much that how do I go to that point where I can just be with the sound? So these two questions. Thank you, Anu. The answer to the first question is when you remember a particular event that you had a personal experience in this physical life with Ishwar Puri Ji, that is what you need to focus on. It's not a mind trick. It is not a mind game. Matlab. Remember you told me about a beautiful experience that you can never, ever forget about Ishwar Puri Ji. You were pregnant with Avir. Yes, I was thinking of the same thing. Exactly. Yes. So please focus on that, because that has touched your heart. It has touched your mind. It has impacted your soul. That is good enough for you to remember Ishwar Puri Ji while you are repeating the Simran. It is not a mind game whereby, okay, mind, try to find something, a personal experience with Ishwar Puri Ji that brings happiness to me. It doesn't work this way. Use your heart, not the mind. 
And this beautiful experience that you explained to me several months ago is good enough, Anu, for you to remember that while you are repeating the five holy names with love and devotion. Thank you. Tike? I'll do that. Tike. Okay. Now, the answer of your second question is when we try to do Bahajan and Dhyan, it's not easy because we have to close our two physical ears so that we can focus on the sound current. Obviously, we may hear the heart, we may hear the blood vessels, the arteries, the veins, uh, we may sneeze, we may burp, etc. And these are all part of the bodily functions. The key is to focus or to imagine that you are on the third eye center. If your attention is on the third eye center, these noises coming from the different organs of the human body will eventually be less, um, uh, you'll have less impact on them. They will not bother you much. You will instead focus on the sound current and the best way to focus on the sound current is to put your attention on the third eye center. Imagine that your attention is on the third eye center, which is the seat of consciousness. Then automatically, these uh, bodily noises will disappear and they will no longer form an inconvenience for us. So Anu, again, the key is to Focus, withdraw the attention, as I mentioned earlier to Jason, withdrawing the attention, the attention to the third eye center, to the seat of consciousness, and focus your attention during bhajan and dhyan, focus your attention over there, at the same time remembering Ishwarji during this beautiful experience that touched you so much. That will help a lot in developing, in listening to the sound current. Thank you. That answers both my questions. Thank you. Friends, it seems these were the Q&A session has come to, it, to an end. I would like to thank each one of you for coming and attending the spiritual discourse and the Q&A session. I hope to return back to Canada in the near future. And again, as I mentioned, IMR could be a possibility in the near future if there is a strong desire expressed by the initiates of Ishwar Puriji. Obviously, um, the people who can attend the IMR, they have to be spiritually initiated. Um, it is not open to the seekers of the truth. Only for those who have been initiated can attend an IMR, and I will certainly uh, work in this endeavor. I think that's going to help a lot, a, a, so many of us uh, having a successful meditation and getting better experiences inside and outside meditation. In conclusion, thank you all for coming and may the love and grace of Ishwar Puriji be always in you.